Hi there Ford owners, today in your 2018 Ford Flex, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Conscious Primus IQ trailer brake controller. In addition to that, we're going to be using kit ETBC7 to help us get our 7-way here at the back and all the wiring we need to get our brake controller up and running. And this is what our brake controller looks like when it's installed. It is a quick release bracket, so you can easily slide it out of there if you want to remove this. That's nice if you're in an area where maybe you want to protect your investments by hiding any of your components inside. You could easily hide this in your center console or glove box so that way nobody knows what you've got in here. This is a proportional brake controller and it is an entry level proportional controller but it's going to have all the features that you would really need. It has the adjustment for the output of the brake controller here and we can see that by using the manual slide which is also a useful feature. If we push that over we can see the output up to a maximum there of 11 all the way down to just about nothing there, zero. And the higher the number is there, the more aggressive and harder your brakes are going to apply. On top, we also have a button for our boost setting, and this is going to make our brakes more aggressive. And this is typically used when you have a trailer that is close to the weight of your vehicle. You will put it on boost setting one if your vehicle weighs a little more than your trailer. If your vehicle and trailer are similar in weight, then you would go to the Boost 2 setting. And if your trailer weighs more than your vehicle, you could use Boost 3, and that'll help adjust your brake controller for you to be more aggressive for those particular settings. One of the things that you may encounter is that you need to back your trailer up. And when backing it up, maybe your brakes are a little bit too sensitive in that reverse direction, and you kind of locks up and you're having a hard time. In order to override this, we can hold down on our brake pedal, and then hold our boost button for five seconds and that'll put it into reverse mode where it's the hold mode so this way it's going to hold the output so it won't put that up when we're backing up that's just real nice for getting those trailers back into that particular spot after three minutes it'll return or you can press that boost button again to take it out of that hold setting the manual slide can also be used if your trailer starts to sway in the back you can hit your manual slide and that's going to apply the brakes on your trailer. What this does is the trailer that's swaying back here while your vehicle's going straight, if you hit the brakes it's going to make this trailer want to separate from your vehicle but they can't separate, they're attached together so it causes them to stretch apart a little bit and that brings your trailer straight in line once again with your trailer getting rid of that sway that you had going on. This brake controller is great for trailers with one to three axles, so that pretty much covers just about anything you would ever want to haul with your Flex. We'll begin our installation here at the back of the vehicle by getting our connector mounted up. You're going to have a bracket as well as a seven-way harness. That's what we're going to be mounting. Depending on the hitch you have, you may have a mounting location on it. If you don't, we have no drill brackets available here at each trailer that just clamp around your hitch. That's what we're using here is a long bracket. The issue we got the, with the long bracket is that the clamp that comes included with it on this particular Kurt hitch, the hitch is so small that the clamp won't clamp onto it, so you will have to provide your own clamp if you have this exact same Kurt hitch. You could also buy a short bracket in addition to a long bracket to get the, and use the clamp out of the short bracket. It's going to be smaller. So now that we've got a mounting location where we're going to be putting our 7-way, we're going to use the hardware that came included with our long bracket here to get it attached. The hardware that comes included with your ETBC7 is just going to be a couple of self-tapping screws, so you could just self-tap this into the bumper or wherever you like as well. Uh, we just prefer not to modify the vehicle if we don't have to. So we'll just slide those through there, we'll then slide our bracket up over those, and then secure it with the hardware that came with our no-drill bracket. When tightening these down, you can often just hold the screw on top with your finger and snug it down with a 10 millimeter socket and that'll get that secured on there. Next, we're gonna take the seven way connector. We're gonna feed all of our wiring right on through, as well as the four pole wiring. And then we'll use the hardware that came included with our ETBC7 kit to secure it to the bracket. That's going to be a long bolt, just like this, with a flat washer, lock washer, and a nut. So you're just going to line up the holes in your connector with the holes in the bracket, slide it on through, and then it's going to go flat washer, lock washer, and nut in that order. We'll then repeat that for the remaining holes. 
We can now snug this down with a 10 millimeter wrench and a Phillips screw. You can use a bit or a screwdriver, whichever works best for you. We can then take our four-way connector and this is going to slide right in on the side here. It's just going to slip into that bracket. So now we need to make some connections here to our harness. We have our four pole here. This is just going to plug into your existing four pole and then we've got four wires here that we're going to need to make connections to. One of them we're not going to use and that's our yellow wire here. This is for your reverse light circuit. Uh, this is an optional hookup you would tap into your existing reverse lights if you wanted to make that work. We're going to be focusing on getting our brake controller operating, which means we need to get these wires hooked up. This is a ground, it's got a ring terminal pre-attached to it, we'll use a self-tapper to secure that, but these are the other two wires that we're going to be connecting to the large harness that comes in your kit. This duplex wire, we're going to take the black wire here, connect it to the black wire from our duplex wire, and we're going to take the blue wire and connect it to the white wire from our duplex wire. I've gone ahead and just separated out the two wires that come in the duplex here at the end so we can make those connections. One of the things we are going to do is we're going to remove the butt connectors that are on these two wires. These are just regular insulated butt connectors. They're not heat shrink so moisture can get down inside of them and it can cause damage to our wires over time and we want to make this as long lasting of an installation as possible. So we're just going to get rid of those. We'll then strip back these wires here we're also going to strip back the wires on our duplex harness and then we're going to be using heat shrink butt connectors to make the connections. Now those don't come in your kit but you can get those here at e-trailer and I highly recommend the upgrade so that way every year you're not coming out here and making a small wiring repair due to corrosion. So we're just going to take these two wires here. I like to give them a little bit of a twist. Mm. And then we're going to crimp a heat shrink butt connector on the end of each one. And then we're just going to take the other wire, our duplex here, we're going to slide it into the other side of that butt connector and then crimp them together. Again, it's going to be black to black and blue to white. We'll then use our heat gun to shrink down those butt connectors. Now we can take our four pole end here and the existing four pole end on our vehicle and we're going to plug these two together. The last connection we have back here is our ground and unfortunately on our flex here there's really just no good ground location back here because we don't want to drill a hole into the trunk pan or anything like that. That's going to allow exhaust gases and moisture to enter inside the vehicle and we don't want that. We want to have a nice solid ground somewhere where it's attached to like our frame rail or something like that where it's not going to go into the actual interior of the vehicle. So our white wire here is just not long enough to reach any of those locations so we are going to have to extend this. We're going to go ahead and hold that off until close to the last step of our install because you we got a big old duplex wire here so let's go ahead and run the rest of our wires and we can probably have enough extra wire at the end to allow us to extend this over to a more appropriate ground. Four pole connectors are fairly common to vibrate loose so I recommend just taking a zip tie and pushing it around there to ensure that that doesn't occur. So now that we've got our connections made back here, we need to route this wire up towards the front of the vehicle so we can get it into the engine compartment as well as inside the driver's seat area so we can make a connection to our brake controlling and everything powered up. So these are going to just continue forward. We go up above our hitch to keep it away from our exhaust and stay on the outside of our trunk pan. We then go above the rear suspension, stay above the rear suspension, and then we cross over to go around the outside of our fuel tank. We stay on the outside of the fuel tank and just zip tie it along the way to the brackets here for our lines. Once we get to the front bracket here for our lines, this is where I actually take the rest of the duplex wire and I took off all the sheathing from here forward because we're going to take some of the white wire here. I took off maybe about a foot and a half, just enough to where I could poke it in there because we can extend the wire from this point once it's inside to reach our brake controller. So I cut our white wire and took 
part of it and ran it right up through this grommet. I just took a screwdriver and poked through there. And then the rest of the white wire that we had, that we had cut off right here, I actually took that and I poked one end of that wire up inside this grommet as well because we need to have our signal that goes to the, from the brake controller to our seven way at the back and we need to also have a power wire in here to power up the brake controller. So that's what we're going to use this other section of white wire for. You'll get a little bit of wire lean when you're a kid. I put it on right here to help hide the wires and protect them against the elements. So we poke that up in there and then we just continue the white wire that we had cut off on along with the black wire in the harness and we just stay above these and it up there and then we used a fish wire to pull this up. I just dropped a piece of airline tubing down. A metal coat hanger works really well too if you just drop it down and then you can wrap some electrical tape around your wires and pull them back up. So here we are up front. We've got our white wire, the piece that we had cut and extended up here as long as, as well as our black wire. We're gonna mount our circuit breakers right here on the strut tower area. You're gonna get three circuit breakers in your kit. You'll get a 20, a 30, and a 40. We're gonna be using the 30 and the 40. We're not gonna be using the 20. The 30 is going to be for power for our brake controller, and that's gonna to connect to our white wire. And the 40 is gonna be power for our uh, charge line that goes back at the seven way. So we can go ahead and get these mounted up. We're actually just gonna mount them right onto this brace here. That way we got a nice close shot to the battery because closer to the battery it is the better. So we're just going to mount that one right there. We'll probably put the black one a little further over on the strut tower. You're going to get some self-tapping screws in your kit. So just slide one of those through and then you're going to use a quarter inch socket to tighten these down. We're just going to tuck our wires out of the way there while we get these mounted up. Now if you look here, there's, there is a wiring harness that runs through here. We want to try to avoid that wiring harness. So we're going to stay off to the side here just a little bit to ensure that we do so. And then we're going to repeat the same procedures here to get our other circuit breaker mounted. Again, we're gonna be putting this one further over here, kind of towards this front edge to avoid any of the components down below. We can now take our white wire, we're gonna strip it back. We're gonna take one of the small ring terminals that come in our kit. That's gonna just slide right on there. And you may or may not need to trim your, your white wire here. It depends on where you mounted your circuit breaker. Yeah, ours is right where it needs to be at the right length. So we just crimp that on there. We can then remove our nut from the silver post. Slide our ring terminal into place and then just secure it back down. We're then gonna do the same thing with our black wire. It's gonna get the same connector. It's gonna to connect to the silver post of the other breaker. The white wire went to the 30 amp breaker and the black wire is going to go to the 40 amp breaker. So we're just gonna cut this one to length and then do the exact same thing. We'll now need wires that are gonna go from the bronze post of our breakers over to our battery positive post. So we're just gonna take our black wire, we're gonna kinda of just measure out the length that we're gonna need, and then we're gonna cut a wire for each of our breakers at the appropriate length to go from the bronze post to the battery. Once you've got this completed, strip back each end of the wires that you had just cut. So now we'll take our wires and we're gonna put a small ring terminal on one side of each of these wires. And then on the other end of these wires, we're gonna be putting the larger ring terminals that come in our kit. So let's just slide on there. Crimp these down. The larger ones are gonna be our battery side and the smaller ones obviously are gonna go on to our circuit breakers. So we're just removing the nut from the bronze post. We're putting the wires that we had just cut with the small ring terminal on there and then re-securing them back down. The other end is gonna to go to the battery, but I recommend at this point just leaving these disconnected because once we connect this to the battery, these are gonna be live and we're gonna be working with these wires inside uh, while we hook up to our brake controller and we don't wanna be working with live wires. Accidents can happen then. And then we gotta 
buy fuses and do repairs. So let's just not do that and just leave that where it is and then head on inside. So now we're in our interior compartment. To get to those wires, you do have to remove a couple of things. Your foot pad here, this just pulls off. The strip down here, that just pulls straight up and then the panel here will pull straight towards you. And once you've got those three panels removed, we can then pull our carpet up here and access those wires. So you can see them here, we are gonna have to extend them. They're not gonna be long enough to reach our brake controller, but we do have a little bit of extra black wire in our kit, so we should be able to extend them up to where they need to be. This is where our customer wants his brake controller installed here, so we can actually just kind of route our wiring right up following this factory wiring here to make it up towards that controller there. Now before we finish routing our wires and getting all those connected, we're gonna get our brake controller mounted up because we need to know where everything's gonna route to. If it, ultimately it's gonna come to this box here. This box will have two different mounting options. You've got the quick release option, which is the one we're gonna be using. And you do also get a metal bracket, which will allow you to adjust the angle of it. But the cool thing about the Primus here is that you can mount it 90 degrees up or down. I mean, you can pretty much mount it and that gives you a pretty good leeway for just about any orientation as long as it's angled towards the front of the vehicle like this. So with that said, the bracket here is going to be a much more low profile bracket that's going to tuck it up nice and give you more leg room. The metal bracket will allow it to adjust the angle more, but it usually sticks out a lot further and doesn't look nearly as pretty. And it's also a lot more difficult to take the brake controller off because it's bolted to it. This one, you can easily disconnect this so you could move it from vehicle to vehicle or you could hide it if you're worried about theft. So now that we know where we're gonna be putting it in this location here, we're just gonna hold our bracket up there and then you're gonna get some screws included with your kit here with your brake controller. This came with our brake controller. So we're just gonna open those up and these are just gonna run in. It's gonna be a quarter inch socket that we're gonna use for that. So we're just gonna swap those out. We'll then hold our bracket up into place and get a screw run through it. And I like to use that first screw, kind of get it snug, but not too snug to where we can still move it left and right. So that way we can center it and get our brake controller nice and level. So now we can take the harness that comes in our kit, we're gonna plug it into the brake controller. I find it easier to plug it in when it's not in the bracket. The bracket kind of covers up the tab there. And then the brake controller actually just kind of slides down into that. And that'll click into place there. So here we can see our wires. We've got four wires on our brake controller we're gonna to need to connect. The blue wire is the output that's gonna to connect to one of the white wire that's going towards our seven pole at the back. The black wire is our power wire. This is going to connect to the white wire that we routed from the circuit breaker inside. White is ground and red is our brake signal, which we're gonna to have to tap into the actual brakes switch on our vehicle to get that right there. So we can go ahead and finish this up here since we've already routed these wires to this point. I'm gonna go ahead and extend them so they can make it up here and reach our brake controller wires. It's very close, but it doesn't look like they're quite gonna reach without a little bit of an extension here. So we're just using some of the extra wire that we had to extend these over. And we're using the butt connectors that came in the kit. These ones are perfect for the inside since they're not heat shrink butt connectors. We're gonna be connecting the circuit breaker wire to the black wire off of our brake controller. So let's go ahead and make that connection. And then the wire is going, the white wire is coming from our seven way at the back. We're gonna extend that one and connect that to the blue wire. All right, and then we can go ahead and get the white wire connected while we're over here. Gonna get those wires tucked back so that way they follow our factory harness there. And if we take a look just here, we've got a factory ground stud right there. So that's a perfect opportunity for us to make our ground connection right to that. We're gonna strip our white wire back. And then we're gonna take one of the larger 
ring terminals that came in our ETB C7 kit and crimp it on there. We can then use an eight millimeter socket to remove the stud here, the little bolt. We're just gonna take our white wire, we're gonna slide it over and then just attach it right back into the location where we removed it from. You may want to angle it to just try to keep it to where it's kind of out of your way. You also want to avoid those right there. That's the uh, these slits. This is where our panel clicks back in. So if we cover that up, uh, we're gonna likely damage this wire when we go to put that panel back on. So just try to avoid those things. That should be pretty good if we just tuck it off back this way. And that ought to work out nicely for us. So now all we got left here on the inside is our red wire. This is gonna to attach to the stoplight switch's cold side, which is the output. So that means when we hit the brake, power is gonna go on that wire to illuminate our brakes. We need it to also send a signal over here to our brake controller. That's located pretty far up in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach a wire to it and extend it over to this. Um, typically with this one here, we are going to have to provide a little bit extra wire to do so because it's up there pretty far and the wiring that's here is very small gauge wire so we don't want to use the duplex wire that came in our kit you're never going to be able to get a quick splice on this and this is way too fat to attach to those small wires uh, it would you'll likely end up breaking the strands on these wires so we're going to go ahead and get a little bit of extra wire here. You can get some extra wire here at each trailer if you need some. I would recommend for these connections choosing a 16 gauge or smaller wire to do so. Now we're going to connect it to our stoplight switch. If we get to our brake pedal and follow the shaft straight up, our stoplight switch is connected right on to, it's actually connected to the pedal for the, uh, for the throttle, but you'll see that the brake bracket there goes up and kind of runs into it. It's that blue kind of connector there. That's our stoplight switch. There are four wires coming out of this switch. We want the violet wire with the white stripe. So we separated out just that one wire. We took our blue uh, quick link or quick splice that comes in our kit and we slid it over the violet wire with the white stripe. And then there's a single hole in the quick splice and we poked our red wire in that hole. And the red wire is a little piece of extension that I'm using to get down to the red wire on the controller. After we've got those both poked in, we just use a pair of pliers to squeeze the metal tab, which will then connect the two together. We then just took that red wire that we're using as an extension, routed it down towards our red wire off of our brake controller and we just butt connected them together right there. And now we've got everything connected to our brake controller here on the inside. All that's left now is power, and of course we need to return to ground at the back with what wire we have left over to get that ground wire extended over. So we went ahead and extended that white wire using the rest of the black wire that we had. And we're gonna run it right over to the frame here, and then we're gonna run, run our self-tapper into the bottom of the frame. This is gonna be the large self-tapper that comes in your kit, so you're gonna use a 10 millimeter socket for, 10 millimeter socket for this. The heat shrink butt connectors we used here, if you purchase heat shrink butt connectors and you've been following along with us using them where we have, you get five in a kit, so you should, only, should have some extra so you can extend it like this as well. We're just gonna slide our ring terminal onto our self-tapper and just run it into the frame. Make sure that's nice solid, it doesn't spin. So we're now back here up front. We just lifted up our cover for our battery. There's our positive post right there we're gonna to attach to. So we'll take our 10 millimeter socket. We're gonna remove the nut. We're then simply just gonna take the ring terminals from our circuit breakers here. We're gonna slide those on top. And then we'll just put our nut back in place and run it back down. So now we can test everything out before we reinstall our components. I recommend you do so, just in case you had a bad crimp or anything or a poor ground that you need to move. 
So we've gone ahead and plugged in our tester, and one of the first things you'll notice is that we've got our 12 volts right here. So we know that the black wire we ran back from our circuit breaker is good to our seven way because it's powered up. We're gonna operate all of our lights and check our uh, brake controller's output as well. So we're gonna go ahead and switch it over to trailer brakes so we can make that inspection. You could just plug this into your trailer and check all of its lights and everything and make sure that it's working as well. But I do recommend a tester because if your trailer has any faults on it, you might get poor readings because of the damage that's on your trailer. Something like this will ensure that you know your vehicle side's working properly. So we want to make sure we've got our left turn signal, right turn signal, tail lamps, and brake lamps. And we should see that we've got some output on our brake controller as well when I hit the brakes. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the manual slide as well. And we can definitely hear the box operating when we use our manual slide so we know we've got our brake controller output as well. So it looks like everything's working properly in here. We can go ahead and reinstall all of our interior panels. And that completes our installation of Deconscious Primus IQ trailer brake controller on our 2018 Ford Flex.